that leads us to abortion and oh, man. and life issues. Yeah. And um, well, why we are. You take this. We are two men <laughs> that are going to talk to the women now about what you need to do. Uh, that you know that gets talked about a lot. Like men can't say anything about this. What, all we're going to do right now is point to biblical principles and let you decide right. Uh, right. on on these things. First, the Christian point of view. This this is just clear, I believe. Uh, the Bible is clear that all human life is made in the image of God. And we should always be against the taking of human life, even pre-born, unborn, in the womb. Zechariah 12, 1 says, The burden of the word of the Lord concerning Israel... Thus declares the Lord, who stretched out the heavens and founded the earth, and formed the spirit of man within him. Ecclesiastes 12, 7, And the dust returns to the earth as it was. The spirit returns to God who gave it. And so we see, okay, God gave us our bodies. He gave us our spirit. We're, we're special. We're different than the animals. In Psalm 139, 13 and following, speaking to God, For you formed my inward parts. You knitted me together in my mother's womb. I praise you, for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Wonderful are your works. My soul knows it very well. My frame was not hidden from you when I was being made in secret, intricately woven in the depths of the earth. Your eyes saw my unformed substance. In your book were written every one of them, the days that were formed for me, when as yet there were none of them. And, and you see this, this perspective of that even in the womb, God was involved knitting us together, knowing everything about us, knowing how many days we had. And there's identity a, was formed in the womb. Right. In God's eyes. There's a sacredness mm -hmm. to human life. And this has come under fire. It's I mean, all through human history we have an enemy, the enemy of our soul, Satan, has tried to devalue human life and in all sorts of ways. And I see this happening today more and more. And, you know, there's this, this guy, Bart Ehrman, he's an extremely liberal, uh, and I mean it, uh, theologically liberal, I don't even want to call him a theologian, but that's, you know, how he's built, but he, you know, he doesn't believe in the deity of Jesus Christ, and he's um, influenced a lot of people, and I heard him saying recently that, well, you know, Adam became a living being when the breath of life entered him, God breathed in breath of life, then he became a living being. And so a baby is not a baby until it takes its first breath, and you could kill a baby all the way up until it's out of the mother's womb. This is what he was advocating. And to me, this is this is evil. evil. This is sick. Uh, and I just want to point out that it's a lie. <laughs> it's that a baby in the womb might not breathe like we do with its lungs, but it is breathing. It, it, if the umbilical cord gets wrapped around its neck, it can die from what lack of oxygen, oxygen to the brain. Right. Um, in fact, every single cell is a living cell, and there's something called cell respiration, and oxygen is involved in cell respiration at the most fundamental level. And so unborn babies, they, they're made in the image of God, they are distinct from their mothers. They have their own DNA. They uh, are completely distinct. They're just being nourished by the mother's body. And so when people say, well, it's it's just a tissue, it's just the mud part of the mother's body, that's just not true. It's a distinct being that was, was created at that point. And I think one story in the Bible that really highlights this is John the Baptist yeah. in his mother's womb. Right. His mother Elizabeth, and it was actually prophesied about him, Luke 1 15, 1 15, for he will be great before the Lord, and he must not drink wine or strong drink, and he will be filled with the Holy Spirit even from his mother's womb. The NIV says, even before he is born, he will be Beautiful. filled with the Holy Spirit. Uh, then we see that in Luke one forty one. When Elizabeth heard the greeting of Mary, the baby leaped in her womb, and Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit. So here's Elizabeth pregnant with John the Baptist, and here's Mary pregnant with Jesus, and they get close to each other, and Elizabeth feels John jump, and she's filled with the Holy Spirit on the spot, and she exclaimed with a loud cry, Blessed are you among women, she's speaking of Mary, and blessed is the fruit of your womb, and why is this granted to me that the mother of my Lord should come to me? 
For behold, when the sound of your greeting came to my ears, the baby in my womb leaped for joy. An unborn baby experiencing joy. And, and so we see from a Christian biblical point of view, unborn life should be valued and protected. Now, there is sacrifice involved in this because there are unexpected and at times unwanted pregnancies uh, that can be emotionally difficult. There can be a lot of sacrifices. It's life-altering. Right now, we're not talking about the, the laws issue. We're talking about the Christian point of view. And as Christians, we follow Jesus. And here's what the world says. I heard this recently. The world would say to a woman that they should say, it's my body and it's my choice. And I can therefore choose to end this baby's life in my womb. Now think about following Jesus, what Jesus said. Jesus said, this is my body. But when Jesus said, this is my body, he wasn't using it as an excuse to uh, take the easy way out. He was using it to say, I'm about to lay down my life and make a very big sacrifice. This is my body given for you. And so from a, a Christian point of view, we need to value life and be willing you end up in an unwanted, unexpected, unplanned pregnancy, I should say, to say this was not in the works, this was not my plan, but God, you're in charge of all things, and this is a sacred child growing in this womb. It's a life. You know, it is a life. And I uh, I think I'll put it up in the video right here, but I saw a photo of a, a, one of those 3D ultrasounds. Those are weird. Yeah. I love them. Yeah. Showing a baby a few weeks before birth. And then the same baby a few weeks after birth, and it was in the same exact position. And you could just see it's the same. It, it was fully a human being before it was born. It's like the same uh, behaviors and all of that. Mm. Christian point of view, protect life. Now, what about the laws, though? Because is this one of those situations like we talked about before where we would say, well, we don't want to push too much on, on it. You know, we don't want to push... Christian values or the Bible on unbelievers. And here's why I believe this situation is different because we're, we're talking about a human life and there are laws against taking human life in every society of the world, not based on the Bible alone. It's just, it's a moral thing that we protect life. And if you listen for just a few minutes, if you have wavered on this because some some Christians will say this. They'll say, I personally believe abortion is wrong. I would never do it. So in that sense, I'm pro-life. But I believe a woman should have a choice. And, and when it comes to the laws in our nation or, yeah, we shouldn't impose our Christian values. But if you listen, I think you'll be very interested and give you some new things to think about. Um, it's not just a Christian or biblical issue. It's a deeply moral issue that I think applies to all of society. And, and I think it very much should affect how we vote. Uh, a lot of Democrat candidates will not say that there should be any limit on abortion, that it should be okay all the way to full term nine months. And they might deflect and say, oh, well, it almost never happened then why don't we make a law against it? Unless, of course, a woman's life is in jeopardy. And th those are tough moral choices, but you prioritize the mother's life. Um, but here is something that many listening to this might not know. I hate to use Europe as our model. <laughs> Europe is a very godless place overall. Like some nations there have more belief in God than others, but it's become very atheistic. It's become very non-church going. In Europe, it is illegal in most countries to have an abortion after 10 to 12 weeks. 10 to 12 weeks. Abortion is completely illegal in Germany. You can be given permission with a cap on 12 weeks, like no more than 12 weeks. But to, to get an abortion before 12 weeks, you, there's mandatory counseling. Why would Europe, which is nowhere near as religious or Christian as the United States, have? why would they put these limits on abortion that 
that our politicians won't. And I, I just need to say, because it's true, it's the Democrat side Absolutely. that is saying, no, we don't want to put any limits on abortion. Where the Republican side is saying, no, this is a moral issue and we should have limits on abortion. I did some research on this in many European countries, even though they're not necessarily very Christian, they aim to strike a balance between the rights of the woman and the rights of the developing fetus. They say, no, this is a human being and has some rights. Well, and that's, that's what you don't hear a lot here where it's like, oh, it's my body, my choice. Like, no, it's not just your body. There's another body. Right. There's another human being. And so after a certain number of weeks, usually 10, 12, or in some cases, 14 weeks in countries in Europe, the fetus is considered to have developed to a stage where it has some moral and legal status leading to more restrictions. Uh, European abortion laws are often grounded in medical science and the question of fetal viability, which is now considered at 24 weeks a baby can survive outside the womb. Well, uh, but many of them, even in Europe, go much earlier than 24 weeks, like I said, 10, 12, uh, sometimes 14 weeks. More recently, the UK has put it all the way up at 24 weeks, which is, uh, you know, that's a lot more than most European nations. But it's still less than what our country as a whole has, you know, what has been pushed right. and what the laws have been. Now it's more complicated because now it's state by state, you know, because of the change. But, um, you know, Barack Obama, he has a lot of skills, you know, but I've never been able to get over that when he was a senator, he fought hard and strong to keep partial birth abortion legal. And partial birth abor abortion was if a baby was full term, it could be halfway born its body outside the womb, outside the birth canal, and its head still in the birth canal, it'd stick an instrument up and open its skull and suck brains out and kill it and then pull it out the last couple inches, a few inches, and say, well, it was not fully born so we could kill it. And Barack Obama was for that. And I've told that to people who have thought, oh, no way. If you look it up, they've, they've come back and said, I looked it up and you were right. I can't believe it. He was the most liberal in the Senate on oh. issues like that. And this is, this is to me, it's, it's a moral outrage. And I don't know why countries in Europe can see that. And on the Democrat side here in the United States, it's explained away, it's justified. We look back at enslavement of Africans. We look at treatment of Native Americans. We, we look at the horrors of the Holocaust and what Hitler and the Nazis did to Jews and to blacks and to homosexuals. And it's, it was evil. And I think that we could be in a situation where just like they got used to that in their time and it didn't seem that bad, you know, the people doing those things that we've been lied to in our society and abortion might not seem that bad, but future generations could judge us you know, for what we have allowed to happen, yeah. you know? I, I agree with that statement completely. Yeah. I think that we will look back on this mm. time in our life and say, how did we get to where we devalue life so greatly? Right. And then here's the incredible contradiction and, and hypocrisy of the situation. There is a penal code, 187 in California, and Penal Code 187 describes uh, the, the consequences for murder, okay? And it says that if someone is killed by another with intent, and it says, or a fetus is killed with intent, it is considered murder. Now, why is it considered murder if it's a fetus as... They didn't even define uh, at any stage. It, it, and later federal law made it more like eight weeks or so. That a baby as young as eight weeks in the womb has the right to life. That if someone intentionally kills it, they go to jail for murder. But why is it considered a human being in that case, but not in the case when the mother doesn't want it? 
That's the answer, right? They, That's the they question. weren't valued. Oh, they weren't valued. Yeah. They weren't valued. Right. And that, yeah, what message does Mother that didn't give? Want them. You only have value if you're wanted. Oh. And and there's a, a inherent contradiction in all of that. And and to me, th this is a deal breaker for me when it comes to individual politicians. If you cannot tell me, like if you're worse than Europe on these things, you know, I believe life begins at conception. But when it comes to those laws, I I don't I can't fathom someone saying I won't put a limit on it. And I have to say, uh, even though I have deep concerns, honestly, about both of our current presidential candidates, I can't believe that Kamala Harris can't answer the question. At what stage is too late to get an abortion? She won't answer it. Like they want it all the way. Because she and knows like, that her answer is going to get her in trouble. Yeah. To me, I can't vote for anyone ever that that can't answer that question, that has no conscience about that. That like that's just a really hard one for me. And there have been times uh, that I've just written in candidates, you know. And my wife might get a vote at some point. For, you know. <laughs> uh, I'll I'll vote for her too. Right. I know that it's a an emotional contentious issue that I don't want to. Um, forget about that. And if anyone is listening to this has had an abortion or encouraged someone to have an abortion, uh, God's grace is unending, is amazing. And, and you can turn to him and say, Lord, I'm sorry for what I did. And you were probably lied to, you know, uh, because we were told that it's a blob of tissue, it's this or that. You don't hear that as much anymore because of advances in science and technology where they can peer into the womb and say, oh my goodness, this is a living human being. It experiences pain when it's being aborted. Wow. It has nerves. It's, 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 the taking of a life is always violent. And abortion is violent against a human life, a, a baby that feels pain. And the Democrat side on this, you know, out in front of the DNC, the, the, their convention, Planned Parenthood had a portable clinic out there and was performing abortions during the convention as if to say we celebrate the taking of these lives. And I'm just against that. I can't accept That's it. That's the part that blows my mind that somebody campaigns or fights for the partial birth abortion. Right. Or they, it's like... Now, I need to clarify that that eventually did get outlawed right. by the Supreme Court, right. you know, maybe 20 or so years ago. And, but but the fact that it was fought for. Fought for. Yeah. That's the part that blows my mm -hmm. mind. Fought for. It's just bizarre to me. Yeah. You so know, to wrap I, it all up. Well, I do want to say what I've noticed in conclusion, or not in conclusion, but in comparison, all but the environmentalism have to do with the value of human life and mm -hmm. God's creation, mm -hmm. whether it's the the needy, um, right? Whether it's immigrants, you know, all of these topics are about seeing God's creation, yeah, as in the image of God mm -hmm. and valuing human life, right? And as believers, we need to vote our conscience in regards to human life and the sanctity of human. Absolutely. Life. And then I would say this to the conservatives regarding abortion, and that is always show compassion, mm -hmm. you know. But then we got to put our money where our mouth is. And that means we need to help women who are struggling when we tell them you need to have this baby. We need to be there for them. And I just want to say, Denise and I are parents of a child we adopted who was born to college students that easily could have, they easily could have gotten an abortion. And the state was very involved with helping our child get adopted and helping us, funding us in ways when we were, you know, it's like they played a role. We need to be for that. And we need to say, hey, uh, adoption is a great alternative. We need to encourage people. There's a long line of people wanting to adopt babies, you know. And, and to say, we are for this and we will resource it. That's why I love the pregnancy centers. I love Foster All, which used to be called Child Share. They helped us 
uh, get interested in foster care and adoption. And I will hear many unbelievers attack Christians who are pro-life and say, you never are willing to help. You won't be one to adopt. And I don't say, well, we did adopt a, a child, needed a home, uh, but it needs to be more. Yeah. yeah. I can, I, I agree. Mm -hmm. So, well, we've covered some things. I hope you've had some stuff to think about. Uh, the bottom line about this election is we need to pray and seek God. And these are just some of the issues that happen in every election that we've talked about. They're not specific to this one. Uh, this one, you'd say, Lord, help bring the, raise the right person up for for the Oval Office and all the, the other seats in yeah. Congress and governors and and then locally. School boards. Absolutely. College boards. Judges. Judges, yeah. All of it. Lord, please raise up wise leaders in our nation. And then it's looking like the presidential election at this point is going to be very close. And that means there could be all sorts of legal headaches fighting over did so-and-so really win or lose like this. We need to pray for mercy for our nation. And, and why don't we... I was going to say, um, I, Jonathan Percluda, a pastor in Texas, Yeah, he's encouraged his church to set a timer at 11.05 every day mm -hmm. on their phone. So at 11.05, <laughs> for representing November 5th, uh -huh. at 11.05, they take a moment, their alarm goes off, and they take a minute to pray yeah. for the election. Yeah. And the wisdom would be... And that could happen twice a day, yeah. 11.05 a.m., 11.05 p.m. Right. That we are praying twice a day for our for our the upcoming country, election. The yeah. upcoming election. So I don't think that's a bad thing for us to challenge our folks with. Thank you for joining us. Yes. And may God lead you and bless you as you vote and are engaged as a citizen of the U.S. Yeah. and the kingdom of God. Thank you. God bless. Bye-bye.